How am I going for time? Oh, I've got about five minutes. All right. Ah! Next thing I want to show you is shrink wrap, which, as I said before, enables you to take an assembly and I've gone to the wrong task here, sorry. Um, it enables you to take an assembly and create a single part out of it that you can send to people. Okay, I'll just go through it a little bit quicker since I am running out of time. <coughs> Alright, so this is, uh, it, it's in a way the derived component dialog box, but it's got a lot of different options. It allows you to create the assembly as a, as a lump, alright, as a solid. You can tell it to remove geometry by how big the part is, if you don't want to include that information. You can also tell it to remove holes based on a range or all holes, if you want to plug them all. It's just going to plug it with solid fill. I'm just going to leave it at the default options and I'll say to break the link with the base assembly so that I can just send someone this single part or a whiff of this single part and they can't reverse engineer my model, essentially. So it goes clunk, clunk, clunk through its process and then we will have an IPT of our entire assembly. It still looks like the assembly. It just has some significant differences in that if you slice graphics down the middle of this model, and I was going to show you, but I ran out of time. If you slice graphics down the middle of this substitute that you've created, it'll just have solid body. You can't see the seams between your parts anymore. Okay, so single IPT file now for that entire assembly. Okay, next thing I want to show you just quickly is the weldment enhancement to the groove weld. So we'll convert to weldment and activate our welds. The groove weld was kind of clunky in the past, but if you had a scenario like this where you had to do a radial fill, you had to do this really ugly fill in one direction and the other. Now all you do is click radial fill, go bam, done. Really nice, really nice and little enhancement makes all the difference. And then finally to the sheet metal components, which I, I really hope you guys enjoy here. They've made such a huge enhancement to this unfolder that it now handles deformation. So we've got a sheet metal component here, and we're going to use this new command called contour roll. This is essentially revolve for sheet metal. So you've got a profile and an axis that it's going to revolve about. You can change the rotate roll angle if you want to. You can change whether it's going above or below the sketch profile that you've done for the contour. Um, all sorts of information. I'll just go the basics of it, and you've got this sort of roll shape here. Pretty simple. One of the other really nice things they've done is give the option of unfold and refold, which makes it quite easy to place features on this roll feature in a way, or any roll feature. Enables you to select your stationary reference and your roll, and it just flattens the thing out for you. So that you can then place quite easily features. Obviously, if I had more time, I would mention that because you all know how strong I feel about fully constraining everything. And when you're done, you just simply go to the browser and refold the feature. Alright, so you're placing it as though it's on a flat pattern feature, you're rolling it and you're getting what the deformed feature is going to look like. We have a look at the flat pattern now as well. That's what we get for a flat pattern. Hopefully that's correct. The unfold can be taken to many levels as well. So you saw I just unfolded the roll that I did earlier. You can also unfold it um, to, to completely flat if you really want to. And any time you have an unfold, all you have to do to get back to your folder state, right click refold. Okay. Lofted flange. Hooray! Okay, in the past, somebody would have sent me a shape like this and said, how do I create it so I can flat pattern it? I'd say you can't. Alright, there was no way to do it. There was if these two faces were parallel, but there was none if they were at an angle or offset from the center point. Now, let me show you how easy it is. And anyone who's had to do these transitional pieces in the past is going to be all right. We've got the option to do a die form or a press break output. Make sure you pick the right one. If you don't, you can edit the feature and that seems to be the only thing you can't change for some reason. So if you wanted to switch it to the other option, you have to delete the feature and redo it. All right, so bam, bam. Simple sketch profiles now create this lofted shape. Only thing we need in order to make it unfold now is a rip down it somewhere. And we can do a rip at, um, at any position. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do it down the direct middle of the part. 
And all we need to do to create a rip is have a sketch point that we can base the rip on. So I'll put it on the center point. You can put it offset if you need to. And rip simply uses this space and that point to create a rip whatever gap size you need. How long has this taken me? And I've been talking the whole time. Okay. Anybody cheering yet? That's such a huge thing. Hooray. It's phenomenal. It's going to save so much time if you have to do this sort of ducting way. All right? So if you haven't installed 2010, do it tomorrow morning so you can use this. All right. The last thing I want to show you is just very briefly the plastic part features. <coughs> Okay, anybody who makes plastic parts, you've now got plastic part tools here, which enable you to just create simple sketches to represent the type of feature you're trying to create, or even just use the edge as a reference. Sorry, thank you, Peter. And you can then, I'm just going to do a grill here. We're going to have a number of different tabs based on what sort of uh, sketch, what, what we want the sketch to do, basically. So there's my boundary. There's my island, there's my ribs, in the past you could do these sort of things but they're a bit of it, a stuff around, now it just makes it really simple. Alright, you can add graphs, you can add, um, you can raise it off the top if you want to but because I'm short on time I'm just going to use the default options here. And cut, done. Right, if you use any sort of plastic um, plastic modelling, just have a quick look at these commands because they've got a, a whole heap of really nice little goodies for you now. All right, I think I rushed to the end of my presentation there, so just quickly, are there any questions? What about file compatibility backwards and forwards between 2009 and 2010? No, I wish listed that um, about March last year to do a backward compatibility patch, and there's nothing yet. It, it hasn't ever been backward compatibility, uh, backward compatible, and that's purely because they do add these new sort of features to it. So if we took this part that has a grill on it and we crank it back to 2009, it's going to go, what the hell is this? <laughs> we won't know how to interpret it. So, I mean, that's the way I logicalise the fact that they haven't done a backward compatible option yet. But it is wishlisted, so hopefully we'll see something in the future that gives us some more options there. Your, um, your workaround for now is to export it as an I just sat or step and import it into the previous version as a dump solo. Any other questions? We're all good? He's going to install 2010 tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. I hope it hasn't been so waste of time or I already knew this for you. Um, thank you for your attention and that oh, half hour sort of went very, very quickly for me. So enjoy.